Why I Loathe Pseudoscience, Part 1, Rupert Sheldrick. Pseudoscience, also known as junk science, is the art of taking utterly unscientific ideas and dressing them up with sciencey sounding language in order to give them the superficial appearance of actual science. Popular forms of pseudoscience include young earth creationism, climate change denialism, homeopathy, chiropractic, crystal healing, reiki, acupuncture, parapsychology, anti-vaccination, and so on and so forth. What most obviously distinguishes pseudoscience from actual science is the fact that pseudoscientific conclusions are not arrived at by application of the scientific method. In other words, they don't provide anything that is observable or testable. Rather, they simply make claims and expect them to be given the same level of credibility as actual scientific hypotheses that have survived the intense scrutiny of the peer review process. Rupert Sheldrake, parapsychologist and proponent of morphic resonance, has criticized the scientific method. In, in the introduction to his book, The Ten Dogmas of Modern Science, Sheldrake states that, quote, Science is being held back by centuries-old assumptions that have hardened into dogmas. The sciences would be better off without them, freer, more interesting, and more fun. End quote. Straight away, this is a rather odd way to pitch a book to anyone scientific. Whether something is interesting or fun has absolutely no bearing on whether it is true. Regarding his claim that the sciences would be freer, let's look at how he would like them to be freer. Sheldrake says... Quote, Contemporary science is based on the claim that all reality is material or physical. There is no reality but material reality. Consciousness is a byproduct of the physical activity of the brain. Matter is unconscious. Evolution is purposeless. God exists only as an idea in human minds and hence in human heads. End quote. Science is the study of the natural world, a.k.a. the physical world, a.k.a. the material world. It does, does not, cannot, and should not concern itself with the supernatural. The supernatural, non-physical, non-material, if it exists, and I'm putting the word exists in inverted commas here because I have no idea how something can exist non-physically, is the concern of a field other than science. It's no coincidence that if one reads through Sheldrake's alleged ten dogmas of science that they, will, they all seem to be ways in which the scientific method doesn't allow for his ideas. The standout one for me is number six. Quote, all biological inheritance is material, carried in the genetic material, DNA, and in other material structures. End quote. This dogma, or observation as I prefer to call it, is very much at variance with Sheldrake's idea of morphic resonance. Morphic resonance, from what I can gather, is a proposed non-material force that controls biological evolution. As it currently stands, there isn't any reason to believe that evolution is controlled by anything, rather that it simply functions via natural selection and random mutation. This isn't a dogma, it's just an observation. Sheldrake accuses modern science of making the, quote, assumption that matter is unconscious, end quote, but it would be more accurate to say that he's making the assumption that it isn't. Occam's razor, which Sheldrake should be familiar with, he even appeals to it when it suits him, dictates that we sh should make as few assumptions as possible. It seems necessary to repeat here that science is the study of the natural, physical, material world. Supernatural, non-physical, non-material notions are not of interest to scientists, at least not while they're at work. There are scientists with beliefs in the supernatural, e.g. Uh, religious beliefs, but said beliefs do not intrude into the work they produce. The big clue is that there's never been a peer-reviewed paper explaining the existence of any god. The, the fact that science doesn't, con science doesn't concern itself with the supernatural is no more an indication that science is flawed than geographers not composing symphonies is an indication that geography is flawed. Uh, science deals with that which is falsifiable, i.e. testable. Supernatural claims are unfalsifiable, i.e. untestable. Ergo, they are not something science should be dealing with. Science cannot be considered flawed because it can't test that which is untestable. It is rather these hypotheses which are flawed because they can't be tested. A somewhat feeble attempt at defending Sheldrake's ideas I've had levelled me at me is that they aren't supernatural. I'm no expert on the supernatural, due in no small part to the fact that I don't believe it exists. 
but if a hypothesis doesn't come with some sort of naturalistic mechanism, then it certainly can't be considered natural. I cannot stress this enough. Science is the study of the natural world. Uh, another argument I've heard is that Sheldrake has a PhD. Well, that's true, he does. But given as he and his fans are highly sceptical of the validity of the very academic community that gave him that PhD, attempting to appeal to the authority of it seems like something of a glaring own goal. If anything, Sheldrake's PhD should mean that we can demand much better work from him, not that we should accept sloppily explained, lazy-minded ideas. Sheldrake hasn't written a peer-reviewed article since the 1980s, and the actual number of articles he has authored that have been peer-reviewed is less than half the number he claims. A better title for Sheldrake's Ten Dogmas of Science would be A List of Reasons Why My Ideas Aren't Scientific. If anyone can conceive of a better method than the scientific method for making discoveries that will improve our lives, then I will take it seriously when it can demonstra demonstrate itself in action, making said discoveries. But the problem is, the demand for demonstration is a scientific demand, ergo not one that I think will ever be met by anything unscientific. Uh, even if we overlook this problem, we have to remember that discoveries made by means other than the scientific method can't, for obvious reasons, be considered scientific. Sheldrake isn't making science freer. He's made himself freer by no longer practicing science. When Sheldrake describes himself as being pro-science while simultaneously peddling a book called The Science Delusion, he is talking out of both sides of his mouth. He is perhaps akin to Christian evangelists who insist that Christianity isn't a religion, but rather a personal relationship with Christ, while simultaneously demanding their freedom of religion be respected. Thanks for watching.